And so we're actually gonna take this and we're gonna put it into a little tart shell and then we're gonna make a meringue on top. I just love the beautiful like buxom, why the hell did I call a meringue buxom? I don't know, whatever. We're here, it's a buxom big naturals meringue. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hey, welcome to Mythical Kitchen, where dreams become food. All right, so we cook with a lot of weird ingredients here in Mythical Kitchen. A lot of people ask very reasonably, does the food actually taste good? We've had Nicole V and Trevor Judge, but I've surrounded myself with sycophants, obsequious yes men, the whole lot of them, patsies who cannot tell me the truth, which is why we need an unbiased expert to actually tell me if I can cook. So we've enlisted the help of professional food critic, Farley Elliott. Hello, 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 how are you? You look very food critic in those glasses. Those are some very food critic glasses. Well, thank you very much, and you are reprising your role as usual as Thighs Fieri, I assume? <laughs> Whatever buff thing you're up to these days? No, but Thighs Fieri is absolutely what I should dress as every Halloween yeah. going forward. All right, so Farley, I am going to cook you a three course meal with one secret ingredient, something we do a lot of in the mythical kitchen that is unceremoniously placed under this towel. Okay, let me guess. It's caviar, uni, all the cool yeah. stuff you guys usually work with. No, not exactly. It is monster oh energy. Oh boy. Drink. Yeah. All right, uh -huh. the green tab and all. Got yeah, it. we got original monster flavor here. It tastes like chemicals. Mm -hmm. Do you think I can do it? I don't. I really <laughs> yeah. don't. That's reasonable. I feel like there is absolutely nothing in here that even seems natural, mm -hmm. and trying to make that feel and taste good in my body is gonna be difficult. I think your body actually craves monster energy drink, because here's the thing, it's got electrolytes in it. Okay. And the body craves it's electrolytes. Got it. Could you tell me what an electrolyte is? It's what's in Monster. Got it. <laughs> no, I love that you're coming into this uh, with a completely closed mind, and you yes. think I can't do it. That is only going to fuel me. A lot of people are inspired by love and cooking. I am inspired uh, by hate and doubt. And let me ask you this. Did you jog to the 7-Eleven to get this, or are you sponsored by Monster Energy? What's your truck look like? I, I, I uh, No, I actually did skateboard. <laughs> I, I skate, yeah, there's a shell station like a quarter mile down, of and course. I didn't think anyone had to use so don't judge me on my skating ability, Farley, judge me on my cooking. You ready to get into it? I'm happy to get into it. Let's do it. <sighs> Boy, it's immediately transported it back to like college, before a theater show. This is really just taking me back, not in a good way, but definitely back. My name is Farley Elliott. I'm a food writer based in Los Angeles. I'm the senior editor of Eater Los Angeles, and I'm also the author of the book Los Angeles Street Food, a history from tamaleros to taco trucks. I can't say that I've ever eaten a gourmet monster energy meal, but really, if I'm being honest, if anybody can pull it off, it's Josh. All right, so let's get cooking. Psych, I'm gonna tell you about Mythical's brand new apparel brand. Trevor, you're wearing it, get in here. It's called Psych, it's got really cool designs, but what if I told you the designs actually change in the sun? Trevor, go out and show them. Yeah. We gotta wait for Trevor to get back. Whereas once it said son, now it says misunderstood. Trevor, tell him how misunderstood you are. Super misunderstood. To get your own psych pieces, go to psych.la. Thank you, Trevor. Mm -hmm. You can keep the shirt. Yeah. But you get one, we all get one. So now we gotta get down to the business of how do we impress a food critic using monster energy? Step one, start drinking a monster so you can energize yourself and uh, kind of get yourself in the mood. Ah! Oh, tastes like Howie's Game Shack when I was 13 playing Battlefield 2. Anyone? Yep, yep, yeah, yeah, Ben gets there. All right, so we took a bunch of Monster and we have reduced it into its pure essence. This is just pure, I call it Monster Molasses or Monlasses. It's a division of Monsanto. <laughs> And what I'm gonna do, first course, I wanna do beet tartare. You've heard of beef tartare. This is kind of the same thing, but right now in the food world, like vegetable cookery is in. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take these beets and I'm actually gonna roast them off until they just get super, super tender on the inside. They're gonna steam, they're gonna concentrate all their flavors. And then I'm gonna kind of chop them up in the style of beef tartare, serve it like beef tartare, except I think all of the acid from the monster, the main flavor that you get from monster is one, chemicals. Two, a uh, little bit of poison, kind of bleach, because that's all the caffeine. Caffeine is just a hard drug. And then three, you're getting some ginseng guarana, which are really delicious flavors. Sorry, I haven't taken a sip of monster in eight seconds. I need it. Woo! That's a lot of guarana extract, a lot of ginseng extract, and so when you reduce that down, it kind of just creates a nice little uh, sour sweet syrup that I think is gonna work really well in a vinaigrette with this beef tartare. Beet, beet, beet tartare, not beef. So I'm gonna wrap up these beets. I'm gonna pop these in the oven. <laughs> All right. Those, those are gonna roast for like three hours. We have, we already like, we'll figure it out. So now what we're gonna do, uh, I want something to serve beef tartare, beet. I want something to serve this beet tartare on 
tartare, a lot of times it'll be served with like grilled bread or crackers or something. Uh, chicharrones are a really cool thing with tartare. But I'm gonna take, uh, this is called bon trang. I've probably messed up the pronunciation, but it's it's like, I think it's called bon trang. It's, bon, it's spelled bon trang, I tried. Uh, this is Vietnamese rice paper. What you typically do is wet this and use it for like fresh summer rolls. But if you deep fry it, it turns into like a really cool kind of vegan chicharrones situation. And so we're gonna do that. I'm gonna temp check this all. These are flowers, you could go, I'm wrong to eat them. Wait, these are sold as edible flowers? It's just a flower. Ah. <laughs> ah. Ah, it tastes like I ate soap. It tastes like I said a bad word when I was a kid. Okay, that's good. All right, so now we're gonna take this Bon Trong rice paper and what I'm gonna do, I wanna kind of keep it thick. I'm gonna do like stacks of two right here. Try and make them nice and crunchy because if you just do one, they're a little thin. You can just take your scissors. These will shatter if you don't do it carefully, just like I'm doing. When have we known me to not do something carefully? I wanna dust it with some beet powder. I think it's gonna be a nice little thing because you go to a fancy restaurant and you see weird colored powders dusting all your food. And I think that's cool, right? they would be like, this is leak ash. And I'm like, I know you can turn foods into ash. I especially didn't know that I wanted to eat ashes, uh, but you do. Or they're like, this is ash of my grandmother. And you're like, did you cremate your grandma and put it on my plate? Because that's fancy. Okay, we're gonna drop in the oil. Maggie, you ready for this? This is gonna be the coolest thing you've ever seen. Look at it, look at it, puffs up. And now we can serve this with our beet tartare and then the, and then he'll eat it and he'll go, wow, Josh, you're so good, your cooking show's not a joke. And I'll go, neither is your writing career. Written word, dead, get a TikTok. <laughs> Pull it out of the oil. If we want to dehydrate and get some of that oil out, we can just pop it in the oven, leave it hot. But I'm gonna continue frying these and then wait for them beets to roast. I like to kind of take it here and then chopstick it, curl it a little bit. There we go, beautiful, beautiful. And if you are a vegetarian, but you, boy, do you love eating the skin of pigs. What a great uh, alternative for you. <laughs> All right, this is beet powder. Uh, I don't know how this is gonna go. We didn't like we didn't like practice any of this also. Yeah, no, I never made any of this and I have no idea how it's really gonna taste. I don't even know if you can dust beet powder on stuff. It's not coming out of the thing, that's a good start. All right, well, let's see if this looks cool. Yeah, I think you just kinda like, yes, ma'am, that looks cool. This is what chefs do in a restaurant. They make something, they go, oh my God, that looks cool. That's how you know a real chef. And sack. <laughs> Heck. And beautiful vegan beet chicharrones. We're gonna wait for those beets to start cooking, and then we got a couple other little tricks up our up our sleeve. It's a quail egg. All right, so we got the beets out of the oven. These have been roasting for a long time. We've let them cool a little bit, and then if you keep them closed in the foil, it steams and the skin becomes very easy to peel. Now we'll proceed to peel and chop all of these beets and do the Food Network chef thing, where they tell you a story about them and their family while they do a menial task. My grandma loves beets. Yeah, that was the whole story. She's just a lady who really likes beets. So great, uh, we've peeled and chopped all of our beets. They're in here. This is about the texture I want on this tartare. Look, it looks exactly like beef tartare. But then now we're gonna add some of this Viva Morton's and molasses to it. Um, no, I'm gonna build a little vinaigrette in like a bowl. I'm gonna do this. So we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil to the beets. We're gonna get a little bit of fat in there. And then we're gonna add some of this monster molasses. This is incredible. That's incredibly tart, um, which is good because we want acid in this dish. We want a lot of acid and sweetness. If you'd add like honey and lemon to a recipe, I mean, this is basically taking that place. We do want a fair amount of it in there. I want to sort of let the monster in the beats really shine in this. Why, do you think the YouTube algorithm like knows what to do with the sentences that we say? Because that's never been uttered in the history and I think that's pretty cool. I'm gonna take a little bit of Dijon mustard as well. Pop that in there. A little bit of black pepper. Pepper loves beets. Let's try, this is a wild texture. Corn syrup, huh? All right, give this a little, little dabity dab. It's very potent, it needs a little bit of salt because we didn't season the beets. I think it's gonna be really good. You taste the monster, but it, it doesn't taste offensive because again, it's just guarana, it's just ginseng. Technically, it's a bunch of burnt caffeine that's also reduced down. Uh, but other than that, I mean, this is pretty freaking tasty, man. I'm just gonna dump all of that in there. That's nice. And then this should sort of get it to hold together really nicely on the plate. All right, give this a little toss. Get the beets nice and marinating in there. That's great. That is really great. It's it's really sweet, really pungent from the mustard. What the heck happened? 
I wanna create a nice little spicy, creamy condiment to go with these very sweet beets. So I'm adding a bunch of Greek yogurt to a blender, as you can see by the fact that there, that's Greek yogurt that went to a blender. And I'm gonna add some lemon zest, again, some freshness to cut through. We got all the earth from the beets. We got all the sugar from the monster. And so now I'm going lemon zest, horseradish. This is fresh ground. That's a lot, whatever, we'll figure it out. It's gonna be good, I think it's gonna be good. I like, I like horseradish and beets, I think it's a really good combo. A lot of black pepper going in there, that was a lot of black pepper too. Well, we'll get there. Uh, that's a little pinch of salt, not too much, because I wanna let the yogurt really speak for itself. And then just a little bit of the juice of the lemon, or yellow lime, as some call them. All right, now we're gonna blend this up. Yep, crank that soldier boy. Ah! Tastes like gogurt. <laughs> no, it's really good. The horseradish comes through. I think it's gonna be a perfect little accompaniment to those beats right there. Now, uh, I'll clean this up a little bit and then we're gonna plate. You know, I love watching Josh transform over the years from a mild-mannered guy behind a desk typing out words about food to whatever odd hulk he's become in jorts and a weird haircut. He's a nice guy. I don't think he's got this competition in the bag, though. Monster seems to be too big of a thing to overcome when you're trying to make actually good food. I see your sommelier has been by. Yes, Our absolutely. loveliest monster energy. Oh my. Farley, for your first court today, we have done a beet tartare. It's got a lot of reduced original monster mixed right in there, a little bit of Dijon mustard vinaigrette, and then there is a whipped Greek yogurt with horseradish and a fresh quail egg yolk on top. And then we have some vegan chicharrones inspired by Vigo Mortensen, one of his many good rolls. That is made from rice paper dusted in beet powder. Uh, please dig in. Also, if you unfurl your napkin, it's a gift for you to take home. I'm bribing oh, the judge. Thank you so much. I will say you've already massively screwed up because I'm left-handed, so. Ah, where, where was that? It's Service points staff. Away, <laughs> points away, but let me just dig into this first and make sure that I get all of Yeah, the chef proper. recommends, which I cannot stress enough, is me. Um, kind of mix it together, you know, and sure. eat the food. I was gonna do just a little a little bump on top. How's that feel? I think that's nice. That feels yeah, nice, right? Hmm. I've never tasted anything so branded. <laughs> <clears throat> Are you tasting the monster in there? Do you think it's a well-balanced dish? It's a pretty well-balanced dish. <clears throat> pretty well-balanced dish, absolutely. Bonus points for adding a little texture on top. I would love, honestly, to know what is behind the vegan chicharrone, because this is a delight. It's a delight, right? It's simply rice paper. Uh, I figured we want to start light and bright. Monster's got a lot of acid into it, so to really kind of prime your palate, didn't want to overwhelm you with any pork fat. Rice paper beats monster, simple. Well, I will say, regardless of the overall quality and what to expect for the rest of the dinner, I would not have known that there was monster energy drink in this had you not told me. So I think that's, that's a, a win, because there's a lot. You're going to be bouncing off the walls later. Yes, absolutely. Uh, if I knew how to run, I'd be jogging home. You know, I don't spend a ton of time interacting with Monster Energy Drink in my day-to-day -day life. I think especially as I've gotten older, I try to limit my dining to whole natural foods, not things that seem to have been pumped out of the core of the earth by evil goblins. There's like a classical structure to like a French seven course meal where you you know, you know start with like, uh, like radishes, but there's nothing like that in the world of Monster Energy Drink. But what there is is Monster Mango Loco. And so we're gonna be incorporating, sorry, give me a sec. Oh God, that's good. We're gonna be incorporating that into our main. Main, I wanna go with the big beautiful piece of fish because Monster's got a lot of acid to it. It's got a lot of sweetness. It's not gonna pair really well with red meat, but I'm thinking we take a nice delicate fish and we drown it in energy drinks. So that's what we're gonna do. This is called fish sauce caramel right here. Uh, you've actually seen me make this. There's a knife just balancing on the edge. Why would we do that? It seems like a metaphor. We've made fish sauce caramel before. Uh, it's a really beautiful Vietnamese dish. You can see it in the inaugural vlog of the channel that we made a while ago where I put it on chicken tendies, two ingredients, fish sauce and sugar, really delicious. And I'm gonna take a lot of this monster concentrate and I'm just gonna dump all of that in there. That's gonna add some nice sweetness and some nice, what? Artificial mango flavor. But I think it's gonna work pretty well. And so we're gonna stir that in there. That's lovely. And then we're gonna get a couple aromatics. We're taking a Fresno chili. We want some spice to accent that. A little bit of star anise. It's a very common ingredient in Vietnamese cookery. It gives you a little bit of that licorice -y bite. Some shallot in there, because then it'll taste like shallots. So we're gonna take a little garlic, and then boom, Michelin star. I never seen that. What else goes in there? These things, these, this is the biggest cinnamon stick I ever done seen in my life, right? I'm not crazy to think this is a giant cinnamon stick. That's pretty rad. So we're gonna add that, and then we're just gonna shut off the heat. So my plan is, I'm gonna take a big old piece of halibut, and then I'm gonna sear that off, and then I'm gonna put that sauce on it. But what I'm also is have had gonna do, 
This is Daji powder. So this is dehydrated uh, bonito flake and kombu seaweed. We're gonna add about two teaspoons of that to this boiling water. It's gonna create a nice stock. We could have made the dashi fresh, but we didn't deal with it. Every restaurant takes shortcuts. We're trying to skim profit margins here. So. I'm gonna take daikon, I'm gonna braise daikon in this dashi and then serve that alongside the fish with a couple other things. So I'm just gonna cut off nice big slices of this daikon here. I really love braised radish in soup. It's one of my absolute favorite things in the world. Get some nice sweetness, some nice funk in there. And we're really gonna have to try, oh, this is, also, this is a green daikon, it's pretty sick. Pretty sick. Uh, radish soup, what was I saying? Good. <laughs> Like tastes good in your mouth, I love that. It's gonna punch out some little radish holes. Drop those thick radish holes right in the, the radish broth. Yeah, radish, more like rad-ish sick. <laughs> so we're gonna, god dang it. Ah! Why do you guys laugh so hard at me just going sick? That's my natural regional accent being from Orange County. You ever go to Newport? That's just, a, it's 100% like business deals are closed. The people's going sick. Like, yeah, Tom, Tom so did you, did you get the APR that you wanted? Okay, suck. All right, uh, daikon, all that's done. Pickles. <laughs> we need a little pop of acid, a little bit of crunch here, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll put more monster in there. So I'm just gonna add some red wine vinegar, a little bit more of that monster puree, some quick, sweet pickled shallots right here. More of a marinated shallot when it really comes down to it. A Little bit of salt, and then we're just gonna take the spoon that hasn't been in my mouth. Has that been in my mouth? All right, so we're gonna have pickled shallots, and then this, we gotta wait for that daikon to uh, braise down, and then get on to cooking some fish. I got a piece of fish. You know, it's fancy because it's like a cube. It's, it's like big on all sides. And to me, that reads fancy. So this is halibut. Halibut is a giant monstrous fish that can weigh up to like 500 pounds, often caught off the coast of Alaska. And it tastes good and it's like $40 a pound. It's one of those fishes that you see at the grocery store and you're like, the hell would I ever buy halibut? And that means it's fancy. So we're gonna salt all sides of this. We've dried it off well on paper towels. It's definitely not a fish you eat the skin on. And so we got a pan. That's good, cause that's what you cook things in. And so we're just gonna pan sear this and then kind of roast it in the oven. And then we're going to finish that in the fish sauce caramel. Anytime you cook fish, put it down and then use your hand. Typically use the back of your hand cause you get a less chance of scorching yourself and getting burning your wrist on the pan. I like to use the back of my hand. You could use a fish spatula or the current spatula that you have, uh, but I like my hand. Cause then you can feel all sides of the fish actually searing off against the hot metal pan. Leave it, leave it there for like 15 seconds. Try and resist pulling your hand away cause it burns, but you know, it's whatever. And so that way it's gonna cook really evenly. So we're just gonna roast that on all sides and we're gonna plate it up with our dashi braised daikon, some of that fish sauce caramel. And we got all these garnishes. Look how pretty those monster pickled shallots turned out. This is gonna be a beautiful plate. You notice I didn't pepper the fish. Josh, why didn't you pepper the fish? I don't know. I'm gonna come to your job and ask you questions. So I'm gonna be like, why is, why do you do data entry like that? Why do you work at the Gap like that? Why do you perform domestic labor like that? Because that should be paid, it's a job. And just gonna give it one little quarter turn. See, we got a nice little golden brown. See right there, we're gonna finish this off in the oven so we don't have to worry about it. All we're going for here is some nice color. Get those beautiful Maillard reactions in there. And we can get a beautiful my our, our, oh God, I'm so bad at puns. I always start a pun and then I assume like maybe it'll come to you. It never does. All right, we're gonna give the fish one last turn. Beautiful, and now we're gonna put that in that there oven. We're gonna finish that cooking off and then we're gonna get some other stuff here in this pan. All right, fish is done, probably, fingers crossed. And so now we're gonna, oh, the caramel pan stuck. All right, and so now I'm gonna, I'm just gonna get more caramel on the stove. I'm gonna add some caramel to this here pot and I just wanna glaze this fish. We got it like 90% of the way cooked. Now I'm just gonna finish it, I'm gonna mount that, a little bit of butter, and we're just gonna get this butter melting in here. I'm gonna add the fish back to that and I'm gonna plate it hot and then this is gonna act as the sauce and the fish juices are gonna leak out into this buttery, monstery caramel. Yeah. Yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Take this here fish, add it to the pot, get that glazed in the caramel. Kinda do one of these guys. This is what chefs do. They glaze things in with a spoon. Beautiful, I don't want the sauce to tighten too much because I don't want to like have just candy resting on the plate. All right, awesome. So we got that lacquered. And then now, take the spatch, get my fish. This is a nice beauty side of the fish. Put that right in the center. No, you know what? Boom, off center, fancy, got him. I think I do still find myself being surprised by food sometimes, and in a way that's good. I, I wanna make sure that I'm still open to that stuff. If I get too jaded and too old, it's probably time to retire. The things that surprise me the most are when people can manipulate really simple ingredients in ways that maybe seem familiar, but ultimately present themselves as new once you taste them. Hi right, Farley, for your second course here, we have a pan-seared halibut that is finished and glazed in a Vietnamese fish sauce caramel that has a whole lot 
lot of uh, Monster Mango. That, that is the juice variety of Monster. A Little bit of fresh Fresno chili. Uh, shallots have been pickled in Monster Pipeline Punch. And then Daikon braised in dashi with a little bit of uh, mint, Marcona almond, and basil. This uh, looks beautiful. Uh, I always knew that you were a talent, but I always assumed it was just in weightlifting. I didn't realize you actually had culinary skill. How's the cook on the fish? This is a delightful. Yeah. Heck yeah. And where did you go to get such a, a thick cut? You know, most restaurants these days, this is where they're scaling down in order mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. bigger margins. You really went all out for me and I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, we got a real big budget. Uh, I can't afford to eat halibut at home, so when I trimmed off the ends of that filet, that's going in soup tonight for dinner. <laughs> right, oh delight. I am gonna pair it. Please. And people don't do this enough at home. You gotta tilt it a little bit. You don't want too much head on there, you know? Mm. Oh. No head at the dinner table. And you really start now, let's watch it. <clears throat> Too familiar, huh? <laughs> you do start to get a sense of where the color from the glaze mm -hmm. originated <laughs> as you, whoo. Now I gotta, I gotta tell you, that was a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> but the dish itself is honestly fantastic. I am genuinely surprised. This tastes very good. Yeah, is there anything you would add, anything you would take away? Where do you think it was unsuccessful, if anything? For me, and maybe this is a little bit more particular to my palate, or certainly the palate of, of a lot of Angelinos, I want something that's maybe got a little bit more of that acid still mm. in it. This is really nice and it certainly skews savory, but even just kind of a peppercorn punch or just mm. a little bit more heat, I think would make this dish really kind of elevate to the next level, but it's really well done. I feel that, thank you. You know, I'm a reasonably tough critic when it comes to food. I have this idea that most food is kind of fine, right? It's really hard to have a super amazing restaurant experience. It's also kind of hard to have a super terrible restaurant experience. So if somebody like Josh can elevate or denigrate food to such a level that it actually stands out, I'm willing. All right, so for dessert, we're gonna use the Monster Pipeline Punch. Why, I don't know, looks kinda red and I really wanna make a grapefruit curd. I absolutely love curd, but lemon curd is gonna be too acidic. I want the monster to be able to counter something bitterness. Trying to give him something a little bit more refreshing. I don't wanna completely murder him with sweetness here. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna add some sugar to a pot right now that's just on low, and then I'm gonna add eggs to that. So a curd is like a, uh, it's like a hollandaise, but sugar. I think that works. And then you're gonna cream the sugar with the eggs, and then we're gonna add all of this grapefruit juice right now. And so the eggs are actually gonna help thicken this up. It's gonna be almost like a custard. You could temper it, you could do it over a double boiler. If you have a steady hand, then we know I do. And if you're willing to strain your curd and just get the chunks out, you can totally just do it in a pan like this. So we got the grapefruit in there, and then now we're gonna take some of this pipeline punch and just lovingly drop all that reduction in there. Gonna get a lot of lovely <laughs> Monster flavor. I think it's gonna be good. A monster, obviously, it, it better fits into to dessert more naturally than, uh, say, halibut. And so I think this is gonna be our most successful course. And so we're actually gonna take this and we're gonna put it into a little tart shell and then we're gonna make a meringue on top. I just love the beautiful, like, buxom. Why the hell did I call meringue buxom? I don't know, whatever. We're here, it's a buxom, big naturals meringue. <laughs> Sorry. It looks cool, I'm saying it looks cool. And then I'm gonna take the grapefruit zest and I'm gonna put some of that in there because that's where you get a lot of those essential oils in the grapefruit and that's gonna drive home a lot of that flavor. I'm also gonna take some Supremes out of this grapefruit and I'm gonna do that fresh. And then, uh, I don't know, some other things. You know, we'll kind of play with it. This is, uh, most restaurants really phone in dessert these days anyways. I plan on being one of them. So you don't want to be, I'm kidding. This is gonna be really good. I think this is gonna be lovely. We're gonna continue whisking that. And then while I'm doing that with one hand, we gotta start making a meringue. And so I'm gonna take three egg whites. I'm gonna drop those into the stand mixer with a little bit of cream of tartar. Cream of tartar, what is it, tartaric acid? That's gonna stabilize everything. We're gonna crank this up. We're gonna start whipping it and then gradually add sugar and some grapefruit zest into it. And go meringue, go! Sack. Once that starts to whip, people are like, don't add your sugar, this, that, whatever, just do it, who cares? It all whips up, it's all going in the same thing. The sugar, if anything, it adds structure to the meringue. Might as well add it early, it's gonna work. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you gotta feed it, it's hungry. Kurt. Curd's looking good, curd's looking foamy. We're not getting any lumps yet. I'm gonna take it off the heat real quick so it's not getting direct contact. And then I'm gonna... Dude, where'd I, what'd I do with it? No way, I thought this was just for me to do tricks with. All right, well, get out of here, scram.
All right, the curd's actually getting nice and thick. Give it about 30 more seconds. This is gonna continue to whip up. And then we're just gonna get this curd in the fridge. Uh, we're gonna have Trevor, pastry chef, make a nice tart shell, and then we're gonna plate it up. You know, I can't imagine a worse person to give a compliment to than Josh. He's already so emotionally invested in his jean shorts and his muscles that giving him the idea of a pleasurable dining experience, having him believe that he can do something, it's gonna be catastrophic for greater Los Angeles. All right, Farley, for our last course, wanted to end you on something sweet. So right here, we have a pipeline punch in grapefruit curd tart the, on Pat Sucre. There is a grapefruit zest meringue, torched a little bit, uh, simple vanilla ice cream with some black pyramid salt, mango, honeycomb, and then some grapefruit supremes, and then a little bit of coolie, which is one ingredient, and that ingredient is monster. Got it. Oh, spoon, I got gotcha. you. I knew you'd carry a little Lucy around. This is great. <laughs> yeah. Just to be safe, probably, I appreciate probably it. Let's take a look. Now, do you recommend I eat everything all at once, or should I just be nibbling around on the Nibble plate? Nibble around, mix and match, man. You're winding down your meal. Mm. It's a little firm at the bottom, but yeah. we're okay. Pastry chef, you know, he's, uh, he's new. <laughs> he's also flipping me off. I'm a person who likes to end a meal with something bright so I can feel at least like I can walk out of the restaurant and make it to my car before collapsing. So sure. this is great. I think the coolie is tough, if I'm being <laughs> honest. <laughs> there's no way, uh -huh. there's no way you're, you're leaving the restaurant not going, I think someone just put Monster Energy drink into my dessert. It was a choice yep. that we made. The curd is probably, yeah, probably the most successful part mm. of the ultimate dessert. This isn't one that I would finish myself naturally, but I do appreciate the effort. You know what? Desserts are weak point. Again, I phoned it in with that the, the coolie, which again is just monster that we put in a pot. Yep. Going back, I'd maybe put some actual fresh mango in it. Yeah. Maybe lighten this up with a little bit of like a uh, herbage or something. That's what I was gonna say. Maybe make it a little bit more herbaceous. And it can be kind of rosemary or something that's not too offensive, but helps mm. bring down that sort of chemical nature to it. But finishing with you know, something nice and tart is ultimately still a win. It's just, you've got to build on the basics here. Just having it be monster, not the right move. Fair enough, fair enough. Farley, overall, on your experience, uh, let's say just with the meal, not with the service or the sommelier, would you give me a good review or a bad review? I think ultimately I would give you a pretty good review. I, I think like many restaurants, there's some hits, there's mm. some misses, there's some things that I would do differently. But as they say, you know, those who can do, choose to do and those who can't sit behind a computer on the internet and make fun of people like you. So you're doing the hard work here. I'm mostly just a bystander and I've been pleasantly surprised. Uh, Farley, thank you so much, man, for coming out, for giving your honest review. Yeah. I, I really appreciate you taking the time. Do you have anything you wanna plug? Where, where can people find you? Yeah, you can find me everywhere online at over, over, under, that's me. Um, and yeah, just support your local restaurants. They need you now more than ever just because we're in a kind of weird new world doesn't mean that your money doesn't go far. So get out there and eat like crazy. That's what I do. God, I've never had something I'm more ready to do. <laughs> all right, and thank you all so much for stopping by The Mythical Kitchen. We got new episodes for you every week. We got new episodes of our podcast, A Hot Dog's a Sandwich, every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcasts. Hit us up on Instagram, at Mythical Kitchen, with pictures of your mythical dishes under hashtag Dreams Become Food. See you all next time. The Mythical Kitchen's favorite way to obliterate garlic immortalized in t-shirt form. Get the Palm Hill Strike tea now at mythical.com.